hear me yeah yeah we're all okay. good are we we're live yeah we're ready we are live and i make you the main screen jenny we'll get rid of the, the housekeeping item real quick hello hi all of you can hear us okay welcome to our first ivy focused lunch demo we're so glad that you've joined us today um, if you're with us, you know that you are part of a select few. Most of you get my uh, monthly invitation to staying the course. And many of you come to staying the course to get more information about diabetes. And you know that I love cooking. So I'm absolutely thrilled that OSU Nutrition Services has joined with us to offer this quick lunch demo. Um, this is also coming to you from, of course, Diabetes Education, Diabetes and Metabolism Research Center, and we're sponsored by the Healthy Communities Obesity and Nutrition Steering Committee. So we've got a lot of people who are sponsoring us today and excited about what we're doing. I want to introduce you. Oh, I should say who I am. I'm Jenny Schrodes. If you don't know me, if you've not been to staying the course before, I'm a diabetes educator. And with me today are chefs Katie McCurdy and Stephanie Urencia. And they are amazing chefs that have been doing these um, webcasts for about two months now. And so they're seasoned professionals at it. And they have a wonderful recipe for us that is absolutely diabetes friendly and absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna turn it over to them now. Um, if you can't see the housekeeping items, what I'd like you to know is that there is an ability for you to chat, which I think you can all see right now. People have been taking advantage of that. And then right beside that icon is an ask a question icon. So if you have a specific question about the recipe or about diabetes, you can type that in there. And I will say, this is the first time we are splitting the screen between two different locations. Chefs Katie and Stephanie are at the hospital and I'm in my home kitchen. So we, um, we may expect some delays or some things that um, are unexpected. If you do not get your question answered during the broadcast, I will reach you through my chart. Okay, Katie and Stephanie, it's all yours. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. We're gonna put the screen large right now so you can see us all. Um, and like Jenny mentioned, we were all in different locations. Katie and I work pretty closely together routinely, and so we try to respect that kind of social distancing and just maintaining you know, our clean bill of health. It is easier for us to chat with you and to be understood when we don't have our masks on, but we do want you to know that everywhere else that we go, we wear them throughout the hospital and every other place that we do. Mm -hmm. And we're in our private kitchen here, and so we make sure to you know, maintain all those health rules and guidelines, and so we're spot on. Um, but we want you to get the best demo that you can. And so that's what we're here to do. All right. So today we are going to be making a, um, essentially it's like a taco black bean dip. Um, so reminiscent of like hummus, um, it's a really great alternative for uh, hummus if you're getting kind of tired of like your traditional chickpea. Um, so by all means, you can use black beans. You could use kidney beans for this. You can use pinto beans. Um, so really just whatever you'd like. Um, we're going to just use some uh, staple pantry items like the beans. Most people have a little bit of cumin. So there's that. Um, we've got chipotles, but you can also just use chili powder in place of that or a taco mix. Um, so 
that's the options that we have for today, but you can just customize it with what you have as well. Um, we're going to use that as a dip with uh, like a veggie tray. And then we're also going to make a little wrap out of it so you can see a couple of options that you'd be able to use. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started and Steph can kind of chat through yeah. the benefits while I'm doing some things. Yeah, we'll keep going through there. Um, and so like Jenny mentioned before, we are from Nutrition Services. You kind of see our big banner in the background. And more formally, what Katie and I will do in the summer months is we work on the mobile education kitchen. And we'll go into the community and do pretty much this. So a demo that's related towards you know, different plant-based foods. And so the beans are spot on with what we would do out in the community. And it's a great way to kind of introduce yourself to some new flavors. And so maybe you're not a huge fan of Chipotle's or you just didn't know what to do with them before. And so we do kind of encourage you all to try that as you're able to or as you'd like to. Mm -hmm. So she'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to move the camera down. Okay. So if you can't auto and video from viewers, it's true. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with beans. I'm going to double up on the recipe that you guys received just because we went through the little recipe so fast that I want to have a little extra to show you how to do the wrap and put some on here. Um, so the recipe calls for one can of black beans rinsed, drained and rinsed. Um, so I'm going to use the equivalent of two. And then also it kind of helps with the larger food processor to be able to um, grind up all of the beans a little bit more readily. Um, if you have a smaller food processor at home, ours is a little bigger. Um, that will work a little bit better. If you have a large food processor, just like us, um, you may need to double the recipe. Uh, and if that's not the case, if you don't even have a food processor, don't worry. You can just smash the beans up with your hand, just kind of like macerate them and then like mix in a little um, of the brine or a little bit of oil too to like break it down as is. And like Katie mentioned, you know, if you've got the food processor, that's great. If you don't, you're able to do that just in a bowl and kind of patiently squish it with your hands. And you can make it to that nice consistency that you like. Or maybe if you have kids or grandkids, it's a great activity to get them involved in the kitchen. You kind of learn about those different health benefits, but it's a little more interactive. All right. So we added our black beans to the food processor, and we're just going to add a little lime juice. Now you could use fresh, or you could use, um, we've got the bottled lime juice going to do that. I've got about a tablespoon, um, which I think the recipe calls for about a teaspoon. But since we're doubling it, I'm putting a little extra in. And I really like, Stephanie and I both really like garlic. So I'm putting a little extra garlic in ours. So we'll just toss that in there. And then for cumin, we're going to go ahead and measure out a little bit of that. And like I said, we'll send the recipe out to you guys so that you have a direct link to this so you can access it again after the fact. And then the chipotles, you've got the sauce that the chipotle sit in, and then there's also the actual chipotle itself. Um, it can be a little bit uh, spicy. So if you're not wanting the spice, I would recommend going with chili powder. Um, but if you like a little bit of the spice, I would go ahead and just add either one whole chipotle and a little bit of the sauce, or you can just use the sauce around it. I really love the chipotle flavor. Go ahead and add a little bit of that in there. Yeah, and so Jenny's got hers at home, which are pretty cool, and that's the same one that we use. And so just that little can that you can buy at the store, they're like a dollar and they're really pantry friendly. Yes. And so you get a lot out of that small can. I think Katie opened one small can and we've had those, um, you know, for a, a variety of recipes that we can do this week. So it holds very well. Yeah. And I think someone else had recommended stuff that you know you're not going to use much that you can just put it in the freezer, like take out what you need and then refreeze in like smaller packs. Yeah. And then Jenny, do you have anything to add? She took the words right out of my mouth. I never use a pan, so I always stick it And so they smell really fragrant. That's the one thing we wish we could share with you. It's got a nice smoky smell to it. Yes. Kind of warms up the room. So I'm going to go ahead and take some cilantro here. So we just have our fresh herb bundle sitting in some of the water so that 
it soaks up through the roots, keeps them fresh while it's in the fridge. This has been in there for almost a week and it still looks decently fresh. So um, cilantro is one of the ones where you can actually get the stem in there and that's not gonna really affect the flavor. In fact, the stems hold a lot more of the fragrance of the cilantro. So it's not a big deal if you don't need to get just the leaves and pick it apart, just kind of choo choo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and chipotles are just smoked jalapenos. Yeah, so really it's just kind of that different name for something that you would um, recognize. So like Katie mentioned with the cilantro, that is what dried coriander would be. And so it still has that same flavor to it. So if you don't have fresh cilantro, that'd be a really nice sub for a pantry friendly item as well. Yeah. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and pop that on there. I went ahead and added a little salt and pepper and we're just gonna whiz it up. Go ahead and give it a scrape down the bowl. This is breaking up really nicely. I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil to ours. You don't have to, like I said, and if you have the brine, you can always use the brine as well. All right, so as you can see, this is broken down really nicely in here. It's a nice kind of dip consistency and it'll just scrape up like this. And then we'll go ahead and show you what it'll look like here. You can just scoop it out. It's a really lovely dip for your veggies. It's a really nice presentation, Katie. Thank you. Yeah, so it's very, very nice. You can add more fresh cilantro if you'd like or anything else. I would do myself a little bit of that chipotle sauce on top, personally. Oh. Um, we do like to talk about how the recipe is a guideline, and so we will post that later. And so what's nice about it is if you've got a can of black beans, that would be perfect. But maybe you've got pinto beans or something. Mm -hmm. um, similar in your pantry and you could use the same ingredients from there and just kind of explore those different flavors. Yeah, yeah that was a good one too. So we're gonna go ahead and make a nice little lunch veggie wrap as well. And we're gonna take just a hearty portion of this and spread it out on here. Since the bean is the main show, it's gonna be our protein. We're gonna put it out here, spread out a nice little bit of it. I've got some fresh spinach. We'll go ahead and do that. And we've got a whole wheat wrap. So we get a lot of nice fiber from the wrap in addition to the beans and then all of the fresh veggies here. So they've got a lot of fiber to them across the board. It helps keep you uh, feeling fuller for longer. And so with the protein and the fiber content, it's a really nice lunch wrap. So very light, uh, still delicious, and it'll kind of hold you over until dinner time, mm -hmm. until that next snack might pop up. Yeah. So we went ahead and added I, red onions as well. Go ahead, Jenny. I think I think that, um, you know, it's good to talk about the fiber here. Most everyone who's been in our classes understand that fiber is going to break down slower. And what yeah. that means to blood sugar is that your blood sugar is not going to go up quite as quickly or maybe even as much. So adding fiber whenever you can to your meals is, is excellent for good blood sugar control. Nice. Okay, so I went ahead and just topped it with a little bit of cheddar cheese here. And you could do this for breakfast. This could even be a breakfast option if you want to add like an egg white or a whole egg in there. Um, this, is, this is probably how I would eat it at home as is, or maybe adding some tomatoes to it. Um, you just can roll it up like this and it's really fresh. I like to just pack as many veggies as I can into a wrap because it just makes me feel a lot better about what I'm eating. And thinking about that wrap, you know, when you're adding the wrap, you're adding carbohydrate. The beans have lo lots of good carbohydrates to them. But if you're worried about your overall carbohydrates for the meal, look for a wrap that's low in carbohydrates. There are lots of different kinds out there. Me, um, in particular, will use the Flat Out brand quite a bit when we're out in the community, just mm -hmm. as it's uh, easy to find at any big box store. And so like Jenny mentioned, you know, it's easy to find those um, just 
when it's right on the label where it shows that it's low carbohydrate mm -hmm. and oftentimes there'll be a whole wheat wrap. They're a little higher in fiber as well. Yeah. Well, let's see. So Katie's got that wrap all made. Do you have any questions for us? Yep. So there you go. And like I said, I might spray a little bit of like tomato or you could even do sh like shredded carrots or anything like that. So the other thing about this recipe that I love is that, is that it's really heart healthy. And so when you have diabetes, that puts you at higher risk for heart disease. So we think about that when we think about the nutrition that we have. The beans are plant-based protein. They're going to fight against cancer. They're going to help with stabilizing blood sugar. They're going to help with heart health. Um, and all those non-starchy vegetables do the same thing. Another thing I love about beans is that they're gonna help with your bone strength. So all the calcium and phosphorus that are in there really help strengthen your bones and your joints. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out, Jenny. Uh, Lee asked, how much chili powder would you use in the dip if you substitute it? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so if you were just doing the one can serving, I would add anywhere from one to two teaspoons of chili powder. You can also get the Chipotle chili powder um, if you don't see the canned uh, versions of the fresh chilies. Um, and then if you just have the plain regular chili powder, like I said, about one to two tables or teaspoons. And then um, same with the taco seasoning mix. If you get like a low sodium taco seasoning mix or if you have one of those around your house, you can easily just sprinkle that in and kind of like do it to taste almost like you would with salt and pepper. So once you get that taco seasoning flavor, if you like a little heavier on the cumin, maybe add a little bit more of that. Um, the cumin, if you, I will say if you do add the taco seasoning mix, just don't add any cumin or chili powder on top of that. Just stick with just that mix for the seasoning. And then I wait until the very end to add any salt and pepper as well, just so that you know what sodium you're getting, you don't overload it with the salt and you don't overload it with the uh, seasoning. Grilled onions, peppers, mushrooms. Are you yeah, meaning? So Linda's, Linda's saying to add that to that yeah. and, and to make it hot yeah. and savory. Yeah. yeah. And so it is, it's a really versatile recipe that Katie mentioned that you can add, you know, whatever you've got just in your fridge to it, um, which is lovely because it makes a nice almost pantry menu item. So mm -hmm. if you buy those cans of beans and maybe you don't happen to get around to it today, you can use it down the road. And like Jenny talked about before, a lot of our recipes that we do kind of play into those different health states and disease states with their prevention and their um, just overall healthfulness with that plant-based diet all the way through. Okay. Yeah, you, and uh, to Jim's point, our um, director off to the side, he had said you could make that into a quesadilla, and you sure could. You just smear it on there, um, put like your cheese, um, you could do a little, um, as Linda had recommended, some like grilled onions and peppers, and that would be absolutely delicious. Hey, okay, and you add a little fresh salsa on top, you got even a little more vegetables in there, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful way to do it. Um, it looks like we're at about out of time. You know, try to keep it about 15 minutes for y'all. So like a nice quick demo. We'll go ahead and if you have any really important questions, go ahead and type them on the side. And like Jenny mentioned, we'll answer those kind of after the broadcast. And pretty soon here, we'll send out the link and we'll send you out that recipe. And we'll be doing these every Tuesday at noon. So please keep joining us back in. Yes. Thank yeah. you guys so much for joining us. It's great to see so many names of people I recognize from the education program. Thanks everybody for your support. Katie and Stephanie, as usual, you've done an amazing job and thank you so much. Of course, thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you next week. I'll see you next week. Thanks guys. Bye.